In Louisiana, storms are coming more often. And they are more violent. This storm pounded the Gulf Coastal community of Grand Isle. It's something forecasters labeled a mini tropical storm, a full month and a half before the start of hurricane season. Uh, I wouldn't call it nothing many. I mean, if we had, a, I, I'd say I had 180 mile an hour winds here Yes, I'll stay for every hurricane. Dean Blanchard is in crisis mode. Shrimp season is just about to start. And this brand new, massive $80,000 condenser for his refrigeration unit blew off the roof the day after it was installed. I mean, look, look, you can see it as clear as day. When that thing started circling, that's why I started running back the other way. And the marshes that for generations protected coastal residents from flooding are all but gone. How about your trunk? You can't, <laughs> there's nothing left. They just let it all go. It just used to be nothing but olives. Nothing but olives. So how did it get this bad? Well, you have to go back to the 1930s, when the U.S. government built a series of levees on the lower Mississippi. Just above New Orleans, Louisiana, constant wave action washes away the land between the river and the levee. The treatment, concrete paving for the levee. For the most part, the levees keep the river from breaching its banks and put an end to catastrophic flooding from the swollen Mississippi. But it also cut off flow of much needed silt and sand as tributaries fanned into the marshes, with the sediment creating a plush green buffer from a storm surge. They're been and are being destroyed. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Bob Marshall has covered Louisiana's coast for 35 years. Right now we're losing between 12 to 16 square miles uh, a year, down from 50 square miles a year in the 70s, mainly because there's a lot less left to lose. The figure tossed around most often is Louisiana loses about a football field of wetlands every 100 minutes. Marshall says the oil and gas industry also carved up the wetlands with more than 45,000 kilometers of canals for exploration and pipelines, adding to erosion problems. It may sound grim, but Marshall says Louisiana could be ahead of the curve. This is really the epicenter of what the rest of the world is going to be going through. The rest of the coastal world will be going through uh, over the, from now on. Louisiana is also offering a solution a massive $50 billion coastal restoration plan spread out over half a century. The centerpiece is diverting the river, so more than 12% of the Mississippi's water and silt pours back into the estuary, allowing sediment to once again create marshlands. We think there's enough mud, all the computer models show that if we just do this on a regular basis, once we have these diversions built, uh, they can run forever. Ironically, without one of the worst environmental disasters, the BP Horizon explosion and oil spill, restoration would not be possible. Settlement money from the oil giant is funding a large chunk. There is no question oil and gas hold considerable sway in Louisiana with its citizens and government. Louisiana's wetlands are washing away at an alarming rate, some of the worst erosion anywhere in the world. Despite overwhelming scientific evidence, there are legions of people in this state who are climate change deniers, meaning they believe it's a hoax or man is not affecting the global temperature. There's no way to rationalize it. I mean, you could put a blind, turn a blind eye to take a handful of money. Despite the fact the state is washing away, five out of eight members of Louisiana's congressional delegation dismiss climate change. But Juan Lafonta, a former state lawmaker says, you can see the effect scorching days have on the economy here. What you're noticing in New Orleans is actually when it comes to commerce, there's no commerce in the city on any days over 90 degrees. A lot of things slow down because people just can't do things. And remember seafood operator Dean Blanchard down on the coast? How much do you blame climate change on the loss of these islands, the rising tides and sinking land? None, 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 none. I don't blame none of it on climate change. Restoration of the all-important wetlands won't be cheap and it won't be easy. And even if the state's ambitious plan is fully implemented, at best it will slow the destruction of these areas. If nothing is done, there's no doubt nearly all of these wetlands will disappear. Sean Caleb's CGTN, Grand Isle, Louisiana.